summer of 2020 will forever be remembered as when the foundation was laid for the dominance of Chelsea Football Club that is to upcome. Welcome to the review of the transfer. Welcome to the Kafka as you and today we're going to review the transfer window. But before we get started, let me say thank you to Frank Lampard, Peter Cech, Marina Garaskaeva, and most importantly Roman Abramovich. Single-handedly, these four people resurrected our club. Our club has been going into a direction of abyss, a direction of success for one in one cup and then nothing. But now I can truly see that the foundation is being laid. And this foundation will be discussed in this upcoming video. Make sure you stick around As you can the sense, end. today's video is a positive one because it's been a fantastic window. There's nothing to be negative about. So, help a brother out, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel because you're grateful. And number three, comment below who's been your favorite signing. But before we continue, what is gonna come up in today's video? We're gonna talk about the notable entries into the club. All eight signings will be discussed. Then we're going to discuss notable leaving, leavers. How much money did they generate? And potential people to keep an eye out who are going on loan, but potentially will have a big future at the club. As I asked, all I want is a like and a subscription from you, and I'll deliver all the content you need and you will enjoy. Let's summer get with window was kicked off before the summer with the signing of Hakim Ziyech. And in my opinion, this signing was a sign of intent. This was the intent that we're not going to get Jaden Sancho. This was, we're going for an alternative route. We're going for a route with Hakim Ziyech plus additional increments. And for what was coming along, the rest of us had no idea. For me, this was a blueprint signing. I loved it. Very excited. For me, for Timo Werner was a marquee signing. This was a statement of intent. Timo Werner being signed for Chelsea was the epitome of we're back and you can't do nothing about it because we're going to be backed. Timo Werner was nine-tenths a Liverpool player in my opinion. The only thing left was the transaction of the money. And Chelsea stepped in, made it efficient. Peter Cech rang him. He said, give me five minutes and I'll persuade you otherwise. Rocked up with Frank Lampard and they closed the deal. For me, this is another great signing and we will see the best of Timo Werner in years to come. Let him settle in. Let him start playing the number nine role and you will see what kind of tremendous talent Then you he look is. at the signings of Thiago Silva, Malang Star, and Javier. I'm not going to pronounce his last name. I don't know how to do it. But Thiago Silva is the leader, the general that is necessary to play for Chelsea at this moment in time. Chelsea didn't have the funds to go in for another marquee name, maybe an 80 million pound defender in Koulibaly. So they went for the next best thing. An experienced veteran that will do a job and quick fix. Thiago Silva's that. We need to be very grateful that we got a player of this calibre. Malang Sarr was a great pickup that could potentially become a Chelsea player one day and is now at Porto going to learn his trade. Javier is a player that left the Barcelona system and is joining Chelsea with tremendous upside, allegedly. I don't know much about him, but from everything I've read, very exciting. The left back position of Ben Chilwell was one that I was a little bit against. I always believed that Sergio Regalon, maybe an Alex Tellez, a Taglifico would be the more economically friendly option. Whilst economically friendly, I thought we didn't have the cash flow to go and get a Kai Havertz if we were opting for the expensive one in Ben Chilwell. But let's not undermine Ben Chilwell's quality, all right? Ben Chilwell does have quality and hopefully he develops to become the world's best left back. At this moment in time, I think that position is in lockdown for the next five years and I can't wait to see what he develops. And if they're going to spend the money, let them because it only makes Chelsea better. Ben Chilwell, Edward the Mendy signing is one that I love. I'm not gonna lie to you because Kepa Riffa Blaga's confidence is gone. Kepa's confidence is obliterated into min minuscule pieces and it's something that, in my opinion, is unfixable at this current club. He needs to go away, a fresh start. It's like a really bad relationship 
and it's bad it's toxic and you keep trying to fix it it's not gonna work it's best to go find yourself someone else and try to rebuild yourself and i i genuinely believe that that's what's happening between chelsea and kepa mendy's going to be a great asset to the squad whether it's a long-term fix or a short-term fix in the short term, I feel very confident with him in the goal. I need to see in the long term what he develops into. From what I've seen so far, I like what I see. But the sample size isn't big enough for me to mortgage my future, the future of this club on him. Finally, Let's see what happens. The statement signing of the summer. Kai freaking Havertz. Kai Havertz. The German Mercer Ozil reincarnation in Kai Havertz. This guy is a generational talent. Don't let anyone else fool you, right? This guy has the potential to be a Ballon d'Or winner. He, has, he is a sample piece of a fantastic team. He is the final piece of the jigsaw, in my opinion, for most teams. We have got a true... When players like him become available, you answer the door, you let him in, you give him everything he wants and then some. And then you ask, what else do you want, my friend? And this is what Chelsea did. And I really appreciate that. Marina, thank you very much for your negotiation skills. This is fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you. This window was coming out of a score of 10, get a 10. Because in my opinion, at the start of the window, if you told me this was going to happen, I would have told you, are you, are you stupid? Are you stupid? Where are you from? What are you lying for? Huh? Look at me trying to go Russian down on you, huh? Where are you getting this from? Are you stupid? Eight players. Chelsea ain't going to do that. Chelsea went and did it. Chelsea went and did it and I love it. 10 out of 10. In love regards it. to the players that left the club permanently, I'm disappointed in this field. Let's talk about it. We had two players that left. Mario Pasalic and Alvaro Morata confirmed. The rest, Emerson's still part of the team, unfortunately. Even for his career, I don't want him out. Then we have Rudiger, Alonso, both priced out of moves out the club. Caballero is still on the wage bill. Kepa is still on the wage bill. I don't think the club did enough to get these players out. And I think they were priced out of moves because Marina runs such a tight ship. When it comes to selling players. And I, listen. Who am I to be going up against her ways? I'm sorry Marina. I'm not going to complain. You do your thing. But I would have wanted a bit more. As you can see there. The club still has a lot on their wage bill. Alright. Look. There was free agent exits in William and Pedro. Which was fantastic decision from the club. Overall for the outs. I would give the club a rating of 6 I think getting William and Pedro off the wage bill was a fantastic decision. Morata for that kind of money is a masterstroke. Palisic for whatever we signed him to sell him for £14 million. Pounds. Wow. But we still left a lot of chips on the table. And for me, this will have to be sorted in January for us to continue to be successful on both on and off the pitch. Now, loans, the loans are the interesting one for me because... We loaned a lot of players and I'm going to talk about the few that I feel that will have a future at Chelsea in the future. So Ethan let's talk Ampadu. about it. He went over to Sheffield United and in my opinion will be back at the club next year in a defensive midfield role or maybe a centre-back role. The guy's got tremendous attributes, whether it's his physique, he is very lean and tall and quick across the ground. He's very comfortable with both feet. He's decent in the air and has a leadership qualities, in my opinion. His leadership qualities were to see even when Conte was here. I remember, I think he was a 17-year-old making his debut and he was bossing people around, playing at the tip of the three at the back. The centre midfield, the centre defender, sorry. The main guy, the David Luiz role, and he did not look out of place. For me, Ethan Ampadu will be back and it was a good loan for him at and Sheffield United. you have the Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Unfortunately, Ruben's career ended in that night in Massachusetts in Boston. The reason being, he played in a friendly that we shouldn't have during the season. He tore his Achilles and I think this is the end of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, sadly. I think no matter how good things go at Fulham, it is Fulham. I don't think Chelsea will ever take him seriously. 
I think with a signing of Kai Havertz, Mason Mounts being ever elevated ahead of him, Conor Gallagher having another loan, I think Ruben's tenure at Chelsea is done. I think this will be Chelsea's way of loaning him out to showcase his abilities, only to drive a hard fee for him when another club deems it relevant to activate the clause to take him away from Chelsea. Sad, but I think it's true. I really hope he proves me wrong in this area. And Ruben needs to play. And I'm happy that he's Then you playing. have the batch of Michi Batshuayi, Bakioko, Ross Barkley. All of them are fighting for careers at the top level. When I say top level, I mean elite clubs. Maybe the top six, top ten. Batshuayi is at Crystal Palace and needs to prove his worth. That he is of the calibre to be playing for a top ten club. Ross Barkley is at Aston Villa, needs to prove again, top 10 club. And then you have Bakayoko, who's running around trying to look for a career. And everywhere apart from Chelsea, he's been, he's been a success story. So for Chelsea, this is basically raising their value and giving them a second chance at their career. For me, this is the best deals for the players and the best deals for the clubs. I'm really excited to see what we can do with these moves. I think Ross Barkley is going to come and make us a fortune based on the season he's going to have at Villa. We signed him for 15 million. I think we can get at least 14 next summer for him based on As the premium. See, there's a ton of players that have gone out on loan. And there's more. Kennedy, Zappa Costa, Jamal Blackman. Those ones, there's no point talking about. They're not going to have a future at the club, sadly. Maybe Jamal Blackman could be a backup goalkeeper eventually. But as of now... And here and now, there's no intentions to have them at the club. They're literally there for the loan fee and to be part of the loan army. So, my rating of the loans, in my opinion, is going to be a 7. I think the Ruben one lets everyone down. Sending Ruben to Fulham is, I think, very naive. Scott Parker could be sacked any minute and we don't know who could come in. Ruben is of a class that is better than Fulham. He should be at a top 10 team. And it's sad that no one else came in for him. I hope he rejuvenates his career and has a long and illustrious career, whether it is at Chelsea or somewhere else. I'm really looking forward to see what but happens. This is the conclusion of the video. This was an extremely positive video, in my opinion. This was a video that's made me smile while I was doing it. Chelsea have had the perfect window for this point. Now it's time to kick on on the pitch. Now it's for Frank to take all these ingredients and give us their best dish on the table that he can fathom. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It really does help. Welcome to the Kafka U era, guys. This is gonna become the biggest Chelsea channel out there. Make sure you stay tuned. Peace out, I'm out.